Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video, we'll take a look at the E2 reaction, rate, and mechanism. You can catch my entire series on substitution and elimination by visiting my website, LeiaFirstSci.com slash substitution dash elimination. E2 stands for elimination by molecular, so let's break this down. Elimination can be understood as kicking something out of the molecule, specifically a beta hydrogen and a leaving group, so we should really call this reaction beta elimination. Bimolecular tells me that it's a second order reaction given that I have two molecules reacting at the same time in the same step. This tells me it's a second order reaction. So let's see what this reaction looks like. The carbon that's holding the leaving group is considered the alpha carbon and any carbon directly attached to that carbon is considered the beta carbon. On this molecule, we have three equivalent beta carbons, and that means the hydrogen atoms attached to them are considered to be equivalent beta hydrogens. In an E2 reaction, we have a strong and negative base reaching out with its lone pair of electrons to grab that beta hydrogen, but it's only grabbing the nucleus or the center of the hydrogens and leaving its electrons behind. These electrons will collapse towards the carbon that holds the leaving group, causing the bond between the carbon and leaving group to break and kicking the entire leaving group out of the molecule. And for the product, we show the two electrons that used to attach the beta hydrogen to the carbon sitting between the alpha and beta carbon as a pi bond and the leaving group completely gone from the molecule. Notice that in this reaction, both the base and the carbon leaving group reacted in the same step. Even though we see a total of three reaction arrows, this is still considered one step of two molecules reacting together or a concerted mechanism. If we look at the kinetics for this reaction, we get that the rate of an E2 reaction is equal to some constant K which we're not worrying about, times the concentration of the alkyl group, meaning the carbon holding the leaving group, and times the concentration of the base or the molecule that grabs that beta hydrogen. The rate shows that the reaction is first order in the alkyl group, first order in the base, and therefore second order overall. Second order is how we get that 2 in the E2 reaction, and this tells me if I change the concentration of the alkyl group or the base, the rate of the reaction will change. If I double the alkyl concentration, the rate doubles. If I double the base concentration, the rate doubles. But if I double both of them, the reaction rate will quadruple because we get times 2 for the alkyl and times 2 for the base, and 2 times 2 gives me 4 times the reaction. This is a concerted mechanism, and so the hydrogen and the leaving group have to be lined up in the same plane, so when the base grabs the hydrogen, the electrons can collapse towards the leaving group and kick it out. Let's show this an example by looking at both the line structure and the Newman projection of this reaction. Let's see what happens when 2-bromobutane reacts with sodium methoxide in methanol and heat. Let's verify that an E2 reaction can take place by analyzing the four concepts used to determine when an SN1, SN2, E1, or E2 reaction can occur. For detailed videos on how to analyze each of these factors, visit my website, layerforside.com slash substitution dash elimination. We'll start with the alkyl group, but for an E2 reaction, we look at two carbons. We look at the alpha carbon, which is the carbon holding the leaving group, and we also look at the beta carbon, which is the carbon directly attached to the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon is secondary, which tells me that the bromine can leave by itself giving me a carbocation or SN1, SN2 reaction, but we can also kick the bromine out giving me a 2-type meaning SN2 or E2 reaction. So far we have not ruled anything out. Next we look at the leaving group and see that bromine can be kicked out and therefore bromine is a good leaving group and therefore can have a substitution or elimination reaction take place, but again we still don't know which one. Here's where it gets interesting. When looking at the attacking nucleophile or base, we want to determine if it's neutral and weak or negative and strong. At first glance, it appears that we have a neutral weak molecule when in fact we don't. NaOCH3 is simply Na plus or a positive spectator ion balancing my strong OCH3 minus in solution. Don't fall for this. If you see Na or K at the start of your reacting molecule, it's just a positive spectator and you likely have a negative oxygen as your attacking molecule. CH3O- or methoxide is considered a very strong base and a strong nucleophile, and that means it will not wait for that slow carbocation to form, but instead it'll be a bully and directly attack the molecule, 
giving me a 2 type, meaning an SN2 or E2 reaction. This entire reaction is dissolved in methanol, which is a polar protic solvent that can help stabilize charges, but also tends to cage a nucleophile, slowing down any potential SN2 reactions. Therefore, since we have a strong base or nucleophile dissolved in a polar protic solvent, we're looking at an E2 reaction favored over an SN2 reaction. The triangle represents heat, which tells me that an E2 reaction is favored over SN2. And this is because the higher temperatures help stabilize that pi bond forming intermediate favoring the E2 reaction. Looking at all of this together, we see the E2 reaction is favored for this molecule. The next question is which of the beta carbons to attack for the elimination reaction. Let's redraw the molecule and identify the hydrogens individually. We have a primary beta carbon which has three beta hydrogens, and we also have a secondary beta carbon that has two beta hydrogens. In order to determine the product, we refer to Zaitsev's rule, which I went into great detail in my E1 part 2 video. But in short, Zaitsev's rule tells us that we want to eliminate to form the most substituted pi bond. If I eliminate a green hydrogen, I wind up with a monosubstituted pi bond. And if I eliminate a blue hydrogen, I wind up with a disubstituted pi bond. Since a disubstituted pi bond is more stable than a monosubstituted, the major product is going to be the blue elimination, and the minor product, if we show it at all, will be the green elimination. In skeletal structures, you don't have to show hydrogen atoms, so I'm only showing the one blue hydrogen that I'm about to eliminate to help you understand what happens. I specifically want you to notice that both the hydrogen and the bromine are in the plane of the page, meaning they're not forward or back, making them coplanar, and the fact that one is up and one is down, making them anti. This is important to an E2 reaction because in order to have that concerted mechanism, the hydrogen and leaving group must be anticoplanar. Let's see what happens. The base reaches out with its lone pair of electrons and grabs the hydrogen atom. The electrons that attach hydrogen to carbon will be kicked in the opposite direction. Notice we're attacking from the right. It gets kicked towards the left in a slightward up direction, and that momentum kicks out the bromine. The technical explanation is that you have to have the p orbitals lined up so that you can form the pi bond with the electrons that are being kicked out. But you can think of this in a much simpler manner. Just imagine the oxygen starting the domino effect and when it attacks the electrons just have to continue going in the same direction. It's almost like when you knock down a domino and it knocks down the next one and the next one, they all follow that pattern. The electrons in this elimination reaction are also following the domino pattern. If we rotate the molecule instead and show both the bromine and the hydrogen in the same plane, but this time they are not anti, they are sin to each other, we can't really visualize the domino effect because the hydrogen's electrons will collapse downward, but there's no domino to continue. We can't grab the electrons, kick them downward, and then make them change directions going up. And of course, the product of this mechanism is the disubstituted alkene that we've already predicted. But now let's look at this in a Newman projection to help you really understand that anticoplanar aspect. This is written as a two-dimensional molecule, so let's make it slightly three-dimensional. I'll take carbon number two and rotate it slightly forward, bringing bromine front, and then I'll rotate carbon three in the opposite direction, pushing hydrogen slightly to the back. I kept the same molecule, but I'm rotating it slightly so that I can turn it into a Newman projection. Don't forget we have that invisible hydrogen going to the back, and then on carbon 3, we have another hydrogen coming forward. We'll draw the Newman projection looking down carbon 2 to carbon 3 so that carbon 2 is the forward atom. On the forward atom, we have a bromine up to the right, hydrogen up to the left, and a methyl group going down. On the rear atom, we have a CH3 going up and a hydrogen going down both to the right and the left. Notice that we have both hydrogen and bromine lined up anti in a straight line and this allows us to do that domino effect as follows. Don't forget we have that rear carbon that's partially hidden by the front carbon. And let's see what happens. The base uses its lone electrons to grab the hydrogen. The hydrogen's electrons collapse between the two carbons and then bromine gets bumped out. Notice the domino effect again. One, two, three, all in a straight line, one kicking out the other. Now let's see what happens if we have the bromine and hydrogen in the same plane. So we'll draw the bromine forward and we have two hydrogen atoms here and don't forget a hydrogen in the back as well. 
Once again, we'll draw the Newman projection, looking down carbon 2 to carbon 3, where carbon 2 is the forward carbon, with a bromine attached to the right, a hydrogen left, and a CH3 going down. This type of structure gives me an eclipse conformation, so the atoms on the rear carbon will be directly behind the atoms on the forward carbon. On the rear carbon, we have a hydrogen going up to the left and to the right, and a methyl group going down. Looking at the bromine we want to eliminate, we have no hydrogen in the anti-position that we can bump electrons towards bromine. Instead, we have a hydrogen directly behind bromine, but if we try to grab that hydrogen, we're essentially asking the electrons to create a domino effect but reverse in the middle. So we want the electrons to go this way and then turn that way. That's not going to happen. And the same thing applies if we want the other green hydrogen. Once again, if we try to collapse the electrons, the momentum will carry it downward and not upward to where the bromine is situated. So in short, the domino effect is a shortcut that you can use to understand and recognize which direction you have to collapse your electrons for elimination. But in reality, we're looking at the p orbitals lined up so that we can collapse hydrogen electrons directly into that new p orbital that will form a pi bond when the leaving group gets kicked out. Be sure to join me in the next video where I work through additional E2 reactions showing you how to choose the correct Zaitsev and stable product. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.